Hey, I'm Sarah Gonzalez. Welcome to the news and why it matters. Stu, what was the top story for you? I go with a new study um, uh, about Me Too, which I think confirms, or at least is you know evidence towards the confirmation of something that we were really afraid of as this thing all started. Okay, Jason. I've got a, my daughter just about to go off to college, and I'm seriously debating on thinking wow, of some really other old. way. Not, I know, right? Good gosh. But thinking of something else to send her to, because college is a waste of freaking money, <laughs> and it's overloaded with Marxists. But have you considered that she could do like transgender interpretive dance courses? That there? hasn't hit the family she dinner table yet. go to the transgender yet. interpretive factory down the road from your house. <laughs> that <Yeah>. has. <laughs> let's just not use my daughter and <laughs> those things. <laughs> Andrew. Uh, this is an important story. This is heart-hitting journalism. Uh, antidepressants are getting into the water supply, and they're getting into fish, and they're making them very horny. And so I would like to talk about that and what we can do. And why it matters. Why like, it matters. I and it will. It matters. I'm going to talk and bring it back. to get to why it matters. Yeah. Uh, before we do that, I want to thank our sponsor, My Patriot Supply. We were actually just talking off air. Uh, Andrew is being sent. My, so I, I, I don't have kids. And my, my parents who are, are, are they, they've already shifted into grandparents mode. Uh, my mom doesn't have anywhere to give that maternal instinct, so she just sends me prepper stuff. <laughs> so I'll get like, she'll just call me and be like, hey, I sent like, you know, like a lock picking kit and, and some like like some lighters that you don't like I, like weird stuff you know and, and all like oh, okay and I've got a go bag so like I'm kind of into this stuff and I built my own Faraday cage so wow Whoa. okay Jeez. well I know where we're going yeah no, I'm not I'm not gonna let you guys know where I live <laughs> I don't have enough I don't have enough supplies for everyone <laughs> but uh, so my Patriot Supply they've got a uh, 25 year shelf life so you can't go wrong with that and uh, really truly you don't know when a some kind of disaster is going to hit where you're going to need uh, that type of food and you're not going to have power, you know, you may not be able to leave your house. So it's important to have at least a little bit of a supply. And uh, right now you can get two weeks worth of breakfast, lunch, and dinner for 75 bucks if you go to preparewithnews.com. Two weeks for 75 bucks. I mean, we... You need to tell your mom about this. Yeah. I might, I might just start getting with, regular shipments of this. And, yeah. <laughs> Preparewithnews.com. Tell your mom. Uh, yes, I rhymed on purpose. <laughs> All right, so the Me Too movement. Yeah, the uh, Me Too movement. There's a new study out from it's some HR organization where they're looking at uh, what has changed, and they polled a bunch of people uh, who are you know executives and tried to figure out how this new era is affecting business. Um, and they found some things that were... Uh, a little disconcerting, um, and it's something that I think is, was a real worry from people who said, uh, you know, like, we believe all women is not a great hashtag. It's, you know, it's it, like, take every claim seriously, that's great. It's a lot, it's a little clunkier, it's a little bit more boring. Listen to uh, all women. Yeah, yeah, listen, yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, but believe all women puts uh, everyone else around them in this state of constant fear. Um, and that's what this study wound up showing. We have some of the details here. According to the study, nearly a third of executives report that they have changed their behaviors uh, to a moderate or uh, uh, to a to a moderate, great, or very great extent to avoid behavior that could be perceived as sexual harassment. Now, that in and of itself is not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, like, it could be that if you not happen to sexually harass anybody. Right. I was, that's a positive <laughs> statistic. Like, hey, I used to tell all those jokes, and now I don't. Okay, that that might be a, an okay situation. However, it goes on. Uh, there were men who specifically, and I will uh, said, I will not hire a woman going forward. Wow. Um, which is scary because, you know, uh, that's, that, that's not right. It's hurting women as well. goes on to say, uh, those who said they would hire a woman said that, uh, uh, that they would not travel with one, and they, more importantly, would not engage in activities after business hours. Um, and it shows, it, well, it goes, goes on to talk about how, look, this is a, a situation where a lot of important business activities happen after hours. You go out and you have drinks, you talk about business, people get together, you make contacts that way. And what we're seeing is a lot of male executives uh, just freaking out because not only, I mean, look, if they're actually committing sexual assault, they should freak out, and I hope they do until the end of time. But people who are just putting themselves in situations where they're afraid to make comments, they're afraid to speak openly, they're afraid to have fun and joke around, they're afraid that even just being in the location uh, at, uh, with a woman after hours or something. I mean, just that it, as we saw with Kavanaugh, all they were looking for was someone who happened to be at the same party, not even in witness the assault. Um, and it could affect you decades later as we're learning. Um, and that's why I think, again, this is kind of the same thing I talked about yesterday, is finding that path to make sure that, most importantly, going forward, women have the... Uh, um, uh, 
the ability to uh, speak out about these things when they happen and not be shunned for them and not be punished for coming out. I think that's the most vital thing. We keep looking backwards, and I think you know there's some value to that in certain cases. But the the more the the more a productive thing I think for us to do is to go forward and see how we can get these things when they are serious to law enforcement authorities to actually go through and adjudicate at the time with evidence. Um, scaring people into saying that they can't, we're, we're actually giving negative effects to women. I mean, it's, it's really, it's completely unfair to women um, to say that they are not able now to do these things. It's not the right reaction from guys. I'm not defending that, that that's, the, that's not the right instinct, but I understand the instinct. Yeah. You, you're, you, you don't know. You know, you, you talk with someone that you don't know very well and uh, you, with the idea that, hey, my career could blow up in one month or one year or 10 years or 30 years from now over some conversation that I may have had, you just, you know what, I'm going to pull myself out of this. I'm not going to risk it. There's, there's not enough upside for me here to help out this person who might be coming up in a career. And that's, that's a negative for everybody. I also wonder uh, how it's going to affect, really, I'm being like honest here how it's going to affect the dating scene <laughs> with yes. boys who are in high school now who are yeah. go about to be you know going out into the world like how how do you think that that's going to affect it well i mean it's um, it's a great question and i think it's a, it's a multifaceted i have a friend who is uh, and it's not jason who's sending their uh, kids to college and it's jason uh, it's jason yeah. um and uh, <laughs> he, he uh, uh they have a boy and they have told him specifically if you are at a party and there's a lot of drinking going on and you see someone who is not, uh, not you know, with it, you know, a girl who is not with it, mm -hmm. normally the gentleman thing to do would be to get her out of that situation, you know, help her get to a room, help her get to a car, drive her home, get her out of that, right? No, they have told, her, told him specifically, don't do that. Just exit from the situation. If you need to call the police, call the police. But don't, don't assist, don't be alone with that person because you never know how that's gonna change. The other part of this is I, you know, I am married. Uh, it was my anniversary yesterday, mm -hmm. 16 years. You don't uh, get to keep milking. No, I, I think I got some. <laughs> no, I got some good props yesterday for saying it on the air, so I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> uh, but uh, I met her at work, right? Like I don't know if I had to freaking date right now, Andrew. I don't know how you. I don't know how you do it. That's just, I'm very handsome. That's yeah. how I pull it off. <laughs> that's how you that's what they come to me, and I'm like, everybody's cool, Greg. Let's move forward. I mean, that is a really great. But I, yeah. well, I met my fiance at work as well. Exactly. I mean, especially Americans are working. So, you know, so long and a, a lot of hours these days that it's like, where else are you going to meet people? Yeah, exactly. And I, I don't have much of a, a game. Uh, <laughs> I would not be successful in today. Thank you. Uh, really, the only way I could ever get anyone to even talk to me was being at work over a long period of time. And it's slow. They convincing them I wasn't horrible. It was very <laughs> difficult. Um, and, uh, you know, I, like, I mean, I, I want to say it's something, it's around half uh, of people have dated someone at work. And I, I want to say marriage is something like 30 or 40% of marriages uh, sprout out of work relationships. It's a high number. Uh, and we're, we're scaring people away from that too. I, it, there's just, it, it, you, you want to say common sense. And I think common sense was a great argument for so many years in this country. And I feel like it's just not common anymore. Like, or, or, we should be able to tell the difference between Harvey Weinstein and a nice, you know, someone asking something and the person saying no thanks and they both move on. That's okay. That's not a crime. And I feel like people have lost that distinction. The workplace that I'm really interested in and uh, some of my background is military. Like we've heard a few things that have come out, yeah. um, ma mainly just some accusations. I remember there was a, journal, a general not too long ago that got accused of, I think, actually rape. And it came out that the allegations were false. And he, I'm sorry, he was a colonel and he was up for a promotion, but lost his promotion, promotion to general. Mm -hmm. um, it was insane. Now I think he just won a multi-million dollar lawsuit against her. Yeah. Um, but we don't really hear about it. And the military, especially the Marine Corps, is the most politically incorrect organization in the entire universe. <laughs> I mean, not even just on the planet. Really? Like, if there's other planets out there, <laughs> I, I the Marine Corps beats for, them all. You guys to the Upright Citizens Brigade Theater in New York and just like, <laughs> yeah. watch, watch yeah. that interaction. Yes. It's the mothership of political correctness. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, like even when you're in boot camp, they're saying the most crazy things, racist, whatever. But they're like, don't worry, I hate all of you guys the same. You know, that's what the drones are gonna say. I'm not, I don't hate you worse than this guy. You're both equally horrible in my eyes. Um, but but it, just, it just keeps getting worse. And you know, it, whether it's like, you know, you know, uh, racial jokes, whether it's gender jokes, whether it's anything, you know, whether it's sexuality jokes. I don't know how it hasn't been hit, but somehow they keep it going and somehow, I don't know. I, but I would not be surprised if that is the next big ultra mega, you know, like, you know, area that gets hit is it, the military. Another interesting one, on this, and this is another bizarre one to bring up, but is porn. Like, there is a giant multi-billion dollar industry, which is 
all sorts of crazy crap going on. And we've just seen an allegation fairly recently of a woman who said she was abused in a scene. She didn't want to do it. Um, and, and of course, it's all on camera, right? She, she says, you know, uh, outwardly, I'm sure, that she wants to, that she's okay doing it, or it would have been a much bigger story. But she said, you know, I felt forced, or I felt like I was being pushed into it. How do you adjudicate something like that? Like when you're being paid to have sex on camera and you say you're willing to do it, but then it gets into a position where, uh, where you're uncomfortable. I mean, think of these, the photographer situations, the, uh, the uh, you know, uh, beyond the idea of just adult stuff, like, you know, you've seen, you know, these, uh, there's been a bunch of allegations against photographers who are the same thing, like you know, models feel the need to be able to kiss up to the mm -hmm. photographer and, and do those things. There's a lot of these industries that ha this hasn't even touched as much as, as it should. And some of those would be really uh, important. You know, I mean, I think like uh, there is a, 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 a real need to be able to flesh some of these situations out because I'm sure there's a lot of ugliness. It just shouldn't, we, we should not embrace the insanity. It should not be believe all women. You've seen, you know, certain commentators occasionally say things like, well, look, if a couple of innocent guys have to go down because I've been, you know, I've been sexually harassed for, for all these years, well, I, that's the price I'm willing to pay. Well, you're not paying it. Yeah, you know, it's not it's not your price to pay. Um, so we have to make sure that these standards that we've developed in our country of making sure that people are innocent until proven guilty, and uh, at least we should at least mentally, internally, when it comes to a public trial like we we like to do these days, we should at least attempt to hit those standards for ourselves. Even if it's not a legal proceeding, you should at least be 100% convinced that this thing happened before you start asking people uh, to lose their jobs and their livelihood. Yeah, uh, old man Jason, you you got a kid about to go to college. I want to do this really quick because I want to hear about those horny fish. <laughs> but, um, but I want to bring up this graphic really quick. I was just reading about how um, Americans are paying for college these days, and so you, what, you, what, what points out, uh, you know, stands out, right, you know, right off the bat, is that twenty-six thousand dollar over twenty-six thousand dollar figure. That's the average amount of what people are spending per year wow. for college. Now, I did a little bit more digging, and let's just keep that graphic up. I will reference it here in a second. But I did a little bit more digging, and uh, th that's even the low end. So like I was just asked a, a, a member of our staff that went to TCU and she said that it's more like around sixty thousand mm. dollars once you add in like room and board and all that stuff. Mm. That's a private school, but even still, so anywhere between like the high twenties to thirties up to sixty thousand, and that's what we're paying. And back back on that graph is like forty seven percent of 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 families are paying this just off of their income and, and savings. Twenty four percent are getting loans, and I think it was only twenty eight percent of that. Is, uh, is through grants or scholarships or something like that. So the vast majority of this stuff is coming out of our own pockets, the money that we already have, and by borrowing. And I'm like, it's, it's insane. I just paid off my school loans. I'm 40 years old now. Insanity. I just paid off my school loans like three years ago. It was so stupid. And I went to a school where I had a big discount on it. And I just did it because basically I wanted to like live in a dope apartment, you know, and yeah. like, you know, stuff like that. It was a r so irresponsible, ridiculous. Now I learned my lesson. But, um, so common, though. I mean, I think so many people are like, "Well, I want to, I want to, I want to grow as a person." Like, what? The, you can do that for free. Yeah, you, you don't need to spend sixty grand a year. Or, to do, or, that. Do, or do like a gap year or something. I have a lot of friends that just went abroad and like volunteered or worked in Australia or something. Yeah. Like interesting people. Yeah, yeah, but you're very hippie. You don't, yeah. you don't know those people <laughs> no, no, who no, would no. just go go abroad. Uh, English speaking country worked on a ranch. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Um, um, I would uh, quickly also highly recommend uh, the case against education by Brian Kaplan. It came out. Uh, I want to say earlier this year. We had him on uh, at that. Time. Time. And he really lines it out like it's a case against education. He's a college professor, by I the way. I assume it's for, formal education. He's, he's pro knowledge, I assume. I, I would assume he is. <laughs> yes. um, however, he's making it, I think, in the most, yeah. uh, you know, uh, provocative way. Um, but it's a really, it's all fact based book about just really how wrong we've gone on this, where it's now it's just. He always talks about how it's all about uh, the pieces of paper, right? And so, yeah. like, you know, the person, this is such a great example of it. A person who goes through all uh, four years of college and um, graduates with a D minus is going to be valued more in the workplace than a person who gets all A pluses and quits the day before graduation. That's insanity. Yeah. That makes yeah. no sense at all. Because it, it's a signaling mechanism. It's a, a that's point. exactly what there's, it is. Like there's, there's um, multiple factors going into why, why we go to college. One is for the life experience. One is for um, the actual knowledge. Sometimes it's vocational. Uh, and then a lot of it is the signaling mechanism. And the problem with the signaling mechanism is it, if it is a signaling mechanism, it's designed to make you stand out with other people, which means you have to go to a better school or you have mm -hmm. to get another degree, which we're now seeing where you know it used to be 
like in the 50s, like high school education was sufficient for you to have a middle class job in the workforce. Now you have to get a, an undergraduate degree and a master's degree, and there's no way to flatten that because if it's a singling mechanism, it doesn't work if it's like that. Mm -hmm. well, I was uh, I was I was looking through some of these. I mean, if you see on the news today, all you, all you see is like you know, the, like I, I have a, a UT. My brother goes to UT, and he's very, come from a very right wing family. Now he's tipping left, and I'm like, what what is going on? Right. I and mean, you always hear about these these like crazy Marxist professors, and um, so dig, dig a little digging on that. And this is so this is what we're basically sending our kids to be indoctrinated. And here's some of the numbers. Uh, the National Association of Scholars just did a study on this, and they interviewed 9,000 professors, 51 of the top 66 schools. And they found that the ratio of Democrat professors versus Republican professors was 12.7 to 1. Wow. 40% of these colleges has zero registered Republicans on staff. So around 80% had so few Republican staff members that they were statistically insignificant. Now, just to, what do you think was the worst out of all subjects, math, history, Obviously, sociology. In, in, in terms really of bad. having Republicans, I'm uh, guessing sociology. So th yeah. that's what I would have thought too. It, that was very high on the list. But the but the worst is is the um, is uh, communications and, and journalism. The the faculty mm -hmm. members is 108 to zero. Out of 9,000 professors, almost 60 schools, there were zero conservative li or libertarian or even middle of the road. They were all very far left leaning. Jeez. Which is like, like I, I went to a debate um, a few years ago now, but it was about affirmative action and, and the guy that was in it made very good points uh, where he, he basically said, look, if everything's, if everything's equal with, with um, people coming in and, and applying, if all things are equal, give it to the diverse candidate because we want to make a diverse campus. And I was like, I actually like that. I think that's good. But the, the follow through with that is you also should have a diverse faculty. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is not something that they tend to be very interested in. Uh, it's, you know, di diversity of thought. Yeah. Uh, one thought. Yep. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take a break and make Jason wait a little bit longer to get to Horny Fish. Back in a minute. The passion of yours generally or just for today? <laughs> I'm just, uh, I'm interested today. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. It's a joke. I was just saying. It could, this could develop, yeah. actually. <laughs> Mm. I can't wait to hear about horny fish mm -hmm. and why they matter. Yeah, they do matter. They do matter. <laughs> uh, so uh, brace yourself. Our rivers are full of feverishly mating fish. This is a Pat Buchanan fever dream, <laughs> and it has come true. <laughs> now, the reason that that's happening... That just means more sushi, doesn't it? it that's does. a good thing. Uh, yes. Oh, hold on. But you can see where I'm going to go with this, because we're going to bring this around. I don't need to know what my sushi has been doing. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, with, I'm with Sarah on this. I want very uh, puritanical fish <laughs> in my rivers and streams. Yeah. I, I want them to know the other fish. I want yes. them, I'm not saying they have to be married, but they need to have an emotional connection, and they need to know <laughs> what's happening and the, the emotional uh, effects of that. So the reason that this is happening is that... Uh, epic amounts of Prozac are getting into the water supply uh, because they can't get uh, treated out the way we can with some other chemicals. So they'll, they'll go into the sewage uh, and then it'll go back into rivers and it'll go out into streams and it'll get into the ocean and things like that. So there's literally so much antidepressant medication in Americans and, in other, and people in Europe and other places in the world that it's getting to the fish and making them horny. From the sewage systems. Uh, I, yeah, I believe it's from the sewage oh. systems, yeah. And, and actually, like if you go to, I think it was in Seattle about two years ago, they did a study where the fish around the Seattle area uh, tested positive for 81 different drugs, including cocaine. Uh, so those fish cannot work. Uh, <laughs> they failed that drug test. But there's so many drugs here. So th this is where I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it back. Why I think it's important uh, is that uh, if you're depressed, that is, that is both psychological and it's neurochemical. I'm not saying anybody that's depressed should just suck it up or anything like that. Like, you know, you should absolutely see a doctor if you need to see a doctor and that kind of thing. But I do think that we are living in the most lonely and alienating time in all of human history. I think in the future, 200 years from now, I think people will look back and go, my God, what a lonely society that was. I would not want to live then. And I think that's why we're coming apart at the seams. I think that's why everybody's so depressed is because this, this community that we're supposed to be a part of uh, is, is broken apart. Like for the, for the first 300,000 years of human evolution, you're on a camping trip with your best friends your whole life. Uh, that feeling you get when you see people at a wedding, that's the everyday normal experience in human humanity. And we've decided to live in boxes by ourselves and go on Facebook. And so my recommendation, if you want to stop these fish from being horny, is uh, join an improv team, join the Rotary Club, go to church, do something, be part of a community. Uh, what if you don't want to stop the fish from being horny? Yeah. If you don't want to just stop in the fish, case there's anyone out there who doesn't throw, want find, that. find fat fish and throw Prozac pills to them. Yeah. And see if you can get them to mate more. Uh, no, but I mean, I think that that is an interesting point that before social media, you know, before we had the age of trying to get, it kind of goes in line with Glenn's book, Addicted to Outrage, that like we feed off of now, you know, you get likes and you get mm -hmm. follows and you get retweets and, you know, we're focusing on that instead of... It's, it's, like, it's like if you need, if you need a family. full meal, that's like potato chips. 
Right. Uh, and our and our brains, you know, there's different parts of our brains. The like the deep reptile part that controls all the emotions. It doesn't know. It, it thinks you're looking at a piece of glass. It doesn't know you're interacting with people. So, yeah. Uh, you did like I, th I think that was an interesting point of like you're going on a camping trip for, with all your best friends. I would also say though it's also the people you really didn't like very much, right? Like they yeah, were all there. You couldn't really control and it. You couldn't get away from them. I'm, I'm not what saying if we you should just go... don't like or enjoy people. Is there a place for people like that? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's New York City. Is full of people <laughs> don't like other people, and for whatever reason, they all live together in a nine million person community of miserable people. <laughs> It is true, though. I think that connection is part of it, you know, and, and it's, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I, it'd be interesting to see from, uh, maybe you've seen these studies of, of what, how much of it is chemical as opposed to that. Or maybe that would well, just I mean, help the, you through the, it. The, right? one, the one can cause the other, right? So, yeah. like, like you, you know, you, you get depressed, you, your, your neurochemical balance changes, at which point you do need medical assistance. But it could either be, it could be behavioral or it could mm -hmm. be genetic. And if it's behavioral, then I, I would say I think this is one of the really big causes is I think people are super lonely in the United States. Yeah, um, just really quickly as an aside, I have a, uh, my old nanny, she's, you know, college age, and it's just so incredible to me. Maybe you see this now with, with your daughter, I don't know, but um, just how much value their, the millennials put into social media, and I mean, Incredible. Yeah, I hear these stories about like, well, so and so read my message on Snapchat, but they didn't write me back, or, you know, they, they're talking to someone else, I'm just like, why do you care so much? It's so dramatic. Is your daughter to that age? Oh, absolutely. She never. She she has her notification. She has her notification set up on her phone, but so that like her phone, like her iPhone, like flashes the. Have you seen that? But it's like so it's going off nonstop and like in church and everything. I get so pissed. It flashes. But, um, yeah, it flashes like the the back flash. There's just another way from visually so you can see oh. it. Oh. Maybe it's for like if if you're deaf or I, I don't know. Huh. But um. It's, it's church mode. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but so it's constantly going off and it, but it's Snapchat. It's Instagram. It's all the people that are responding to her stuff and she's like glued to it. I I, I, I cannot take and her it, off. But and if, and if someone doesn't respond to you in a timely manner, it's like. I cannot believe deal. that yeah. he just did that. And I'm like, maybe they're just spending time with their family like yeah, they're supposed to. Deal. I don't know. Yep. What, you, were you oh, I, I, I was a substitute teacher uh, until they asked me to stop. And uh, I thought, wait, I, I thought you said people thought you were a substitute teacher. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was mistaken as a substitute teacher in high school all the time. And I was like, really you're... tall and a baritone, and I'm articulate. And now you're not allowed within 500 feet. Exactly, uh, but it's due to drug <laughs> charges. It had nothing to do with anything sexual or weird. But uh, but but I was a substitute teacher, and uh, and it would have been like uh, about 10 years ago now. Uh, and the the policy at the school that I was subbing at was you couldn't bring out your phone. So I was uh, it was maybe 12 year olds maybe, and uh, one of them took their phone out. and was like, hey, give me your phone. Uh, I'm gonna give it back to the crash, and the person started crying. Like, what if, like, what if someone wants to talk to me? And I'm like, you're 12. All everyone you know is in this room. <laughs> like, is the president gonna call you? Is your wife going into labor? Like, just wait a minute, I'll give it back to you. Now there is like, there is like an addiction. You know, yeah. but seriously, like you're taking them off of a drug when you take that phone yes. away. Put out an Amber Alert if you lose the phone. Yeah. It's amazing. Right. It's similar with video games. Uh, all right, we gotta take a break. Yeah, but let's not talk negatively about video games. I don't think that's the right thing to do. I don't think that's the right place to take this. Can we delete this part of the show? Is that possible? Oh, it's no, it's a real addiction. I'm sorry, Jason, do you need to be somewhere? No, no, about... I was surprised, the show's going by fast. It's insane. It's because you guys talk so <laughs> I know, right? I would I never can, get I can you to stop. read a book, drink a glass of scotch while you guys do this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so remember, if you have not already done this, go to Facebook and like our new page, The News and Why It Matters. Uh, make sure that you click like and not just follow, and then click that check mark and do see first, because otherwise Facebook doesn't want you to see our stuff. I'm not sure if you know this, but we are a little bit conservative leaning, mm. and seems to be against that. So I, go there. I was not told that this is a conservative show. <laughs>